Hello. So here's, well, here's what I'm looking at. Um, Psalms 40 and, you know, Hebrews 10. Seems like they're saying something different, but I'm not hearing anything different, actually. I'm hearing then open to their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So look at in Psalms, sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. <laughs> On my ears. Let's see if it'll let me do it. Mine ears hast thou opened. Okay. Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not desire. Same thing. But my ears have thy open. Look at what this says. The ears, mine ears has thou opened. You opened my ears. Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but you opened my ears. What did he open your ears to? Because now that the light came into the world, now we have understanding about revelation of Jesus Christ. What are the ears open to? But a body has thou prepared me. Because it's saying sacrifice and offerings God doesn't desire. So what does he desire? That your, your ears are open? What are your ear what are what are your spiritual ears open to? Well, right here. A body thou hast prepared me. Yeah. Well, just like in Genesis with Abraham, God provided the lamb. So, 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 so look. Sacrifice and offerings thou didst not desire. Mine ears has thou, my ears has thou opened. So the ears are open that God doesn't desire the temporal, yearly, continual sin offerings that Israel was doing. God didn't desire those things. It was temporal. My ears has thou opened. That's what God desires. Sacrifice and offerings thou did not desire. My ears has, my ears has thou opened. So God opened the ears, the ears of David um, and the ears of us to let us know, well, what, what do you desire? You don't want our sacrifices? No, because God provided the lamb. Here is what God desires. His ears were open. A body has thou prepared me. Yeah. You either see it in here or you don't. Burnt offering and sin offering, thou has not required. Has thou not required? Burnt offering and sin offering, he doesn't require. Now look it. It's talking about it's talking about the Lamb of God. It's talking about Jesus Christ right here, the Son of God. Then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yeah, thy law is within my heart. I delight to do thy will? Look it. His ears were open. A body has thou prepared me. Here's now here's the body. He came already. Now this is after in Hebrews. No. Jesus. Um it's written. I think Hebrews is written written by Paul also. Um But a body has thou prepared me. Yeah, it's written by Paul. A body has thou prepared me. And look it, he did come. He did come to do his will, to do God's will. He did. He is the, he's the body prepared and your eyes, your ears are opened to hear that God doesn't desire sacrifices and offerings anymore. Not like that. But his ears has thou opened. His ears. You don't desire this, Lord, but my ears has thou opened. You have opened, you have opened my ears. That, that the blood of bulls and rams and goats cannot take away sin. That was temporary. So, who delights in thy will, O oh my God? Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, delights in his will. So now that the ears are open, what God does require, well, God will provide the lamb. A body. Are your ears open? Do you hear this? A body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sac sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no... See, he has had. That's past. God has had no pleasure in those things because the, that can't remove, it's temporal. That can't remove sins. It reminds you of your sin year after year, um, continually having to do those sacrifices. You know, 
because there's none righteous. There's none, there's none righteous trying to um, keep everything and God's showing you you can't. It's a shadow. It points to the law, points you to Jesus because he's the righteousness of God and he, he kept it perfect and we keep it perfect in him. So look at in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. It was temporary, but God provided a body, a body prepared. He provided a lamb. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me, the volume of the book. Remember what it says also, I think in John, search the scriptures for in them, in them, search the Old Testament. Here, search Psalms, uh, search the scriptures, search them, search the scriptures for in them, you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. Just like it says, the volume of the book is written of me. Right? So search these scriptures in the Old Testament. And you will see, you will see that it testifies of Jesus Christ. And the New Testament is the light and it's fulfilled. So above what he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin. These are all the different kind of offerings. Sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings, an offering for sin, thou wouldest not. Neither has pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Yeah, Jesus came to do the will. He's the body God prepared. The final one-time atonement sacrifice. You know, there's no um, remission of sin. There's no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. So, he taketh away the first, that he may establish the second, a better covenant. You know, the covenant of the sprinkling, right? The blood of the covenant, the New Testament, the new covenant, the high priest. Um, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So there's the body for prepared. And remember in John 17, 17, sanctify them by the truth and the word is true. So you're sanctified by Jesus. All this is happening to your spiritual temple through his right, in Christ's righteousness by abiding in the vine. Um, you know, and the father's the vine dresser, the husbandman, and he's pruning away the bad, pruning away the bad, and he's producing good fruits. Um, that's what, that's what he's doing. So let me see if there's, um, something else I want to show you. Uh, something else I want to show you too. Let me see if I can find it in here. Okay. Look at this. Look at this. Same chapter. Okay. In Psalms. Many, O Lord, my God. Are thy wonderful works. Remember, Jesus said, if you don't believe me, the words I speak and the commandments I speak are for my Father. If you don't believe me, then at least believe for my very work's sake. Look what it says in Psalms 40, the same chapter. Verse 5. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts, which are to us word, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. So we speak in the words and the holy thoughts of God. If I can declare, if I can, if, if, if I can declare, right? If I can, if I can declare. So he tells them, Sacrifice and offerings thou dost not desire. God doesn't desire these things. It's temporary. Temporary. Mine ears hast thou opened. Yeah, he's opening our ears to understand in Hebrews, to understand in the book of Hebrews 10, that a body God has prepared. So, so sacrifice and offerings you don't desire. Well, then what do we do, Lord? Believe on who he sent. My ears have, have, have you opened. God... God opened my ears. God opened my ears to understand the blood of bulls and goats can't take away my sins. These sacrifices and offerings can't re can't re can't pay my sin debt. So he opened my ears. Well, what's the Lord going to do? The Lord's going to handle it. I'll provide the lamb. A body has thou prepared. But look at if I if I would if I would declare and speak of them. Yeah, he sent his word. To heal and deliver them from their destructions. Jesus was sent to declare these things. To declare the word of God. Um, the, the,
Remember? Declare what you just read. You will declare. No man had seen God at any time. Oh, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Now, what's hidden in the Father's bosom? That would be his word, because that is him. The Father's thoughts, just like you read in Psalms just now, it says his thoughts. He's going to, he's, Jesus is talking about, he's going to, it's about Jesus. He's going to declare the Father's thoughts. And the word is who goes forth, was made flesh to go out and walk God's talk and speak. He was the son. He manifests as the son of God. Right? And he's hidden in the bosom of his father. And he's the word. And he sent, and he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. And that's in Psalms also. But he's hidden in the bosom, the bosom of his father, which is the words that God speaks, his thoughts. And the son, the word made flesh, God manifest in the flesh, he had declared him. He hadn't, he had declared him, he, he, he had, he had declared his thoughts, he had declared his thoughts, so let's go back to this really quick. So, so look at, okay, look at, look at, many, O Lord, are thy wonderful works, are they wonderful works, which thou hast done, and thy thoughts, thy thoughts. Now, when God is an invisible Holy Spirit and he has a thought, all right? The, the, word, the word is the Son of God. The word was manifest in the flesh to walk among us. God's thoughts right here. He's the invisible Holy Spirit. He's the Father and he's the Word and it's one God. And he manifested himself. And we know him as the Son of God. And his thoughts went forth this, as manifest physically as the Son of God went forth. The word made flesh. God has a thought. And then the word, the word, the word in the flesh, Jesus Christ. If I would declare, now the word's going, God's got his thought. He can't do nothing until he hears from the father. The thought comes and he goes and declares and speaks of them. And they are more than can be numbered. You know, God could write books of everything that is spoken of God. You know, be more than more books than the world could probably hold. I mean, who knows, right? Um, God knows. So look at so 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 look at look at these look at these works right here. Look at these works right here. I'm trying to find uh I posted this out. Let's see. Marvelous works, declaring marvelous declaring marvelous works of God. <laughs> marvelous works of God. Call him, call him Yahweh. Well, I'm gonna call I'm gonna call him Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. That's that's the name. That's the name that. Yeah, that's the name that's got power. Devils hate that name. So remember, he's talking about remember he's talking about his marvelous works. Well, let's 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 read Matthew first. Okay. Talking about sacrifices and offerings, I desire not, um, but thy but my ears, but my ears, God has opened, right? And then in Hebrews. <laughs> Sacrifice and offerings, the temporal things, God did not desire those things or had he did, did not have pleasure in those things. But in Psalms, his the ears have been opened to do, oh Lord, I will do your will. In Hebrews, he says the same thing. Oh Lord, I will do your will. I have come to do your will. The volume of the book is written of me talking about the lamb, right? Yeah. So sacrifice and offerings, God doesn't desire those things. He had no pleasure in those things. It was temporal. God provided a lamb. My ears, God has opened to understand. Well, if you don't desire sacrifice and offerings, my ears are open. The prophets knew. <laughs> Moses, Moses, Moses knew that the book was written of the Messiah. Um, testified, test, testified of Jesus Christ, because they even say in the New Testament, if you don't hear Moses and the prophets, you won't hear any. You won't won't believe if. Hear if some you won't hear someone who's risen from the dead, so you won't even hear the revelation of Jesus Christ. Um, and you know, if you believed Moses, you'd believe my words, Jesus said when he was here in the flesh. He said, If you would have believed Moses, you'd believe my words, because Moses wrote Moses wrote of me in the volume of the book. Moses isn't, isn't writing about himself, although he speaks 
to, about himself in third person. He's writing out everything, but it's the Holy Spirit um, speaking through them. The volume of the book, search the scriptures, they testify of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus. Of Jesus. And Moses, and Moses knew that. He wrote, Moses wrote of him, you know, to recognize the Messiah. Now look at offerings, sin offerings and sacrifices thou desire not. God does not desire that. No temporal. He doesn't want that. He doesn't have any pleasure in that. But my ears you have opened. So David so David understood. I bet you he knew. My ears have you opened. Why would he say that? Okay, then, then you have to ask yourself, well then what does God desire if he doesn't desire our sacrifices and our offerings? Me to go look for an unspotted lamb and do all those ceremonial ordinances and that stuff. Um, what does by the law of Moses? Well, then what? What is he opening our ears to? What does God desire? Oh, a body has thou prepared. God purchased the church with His own blood. The, you know, it's only begun, son. Now look at in Matthew that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, "I will open my mouth in parables." Jesus, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. When Jesus comes, he's going to utter things, you know, and it's that that we have not heard, you know. Um, Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For many righteous, uh, many kings and prophets desire to hear those things you hear and see those things you see and have not been able to. So there came a time when the light came into the world, but the darkness comprehended it not. They couldn't hear. They couldn't. They couldn't hear. They were dull of hearing because they had no faith. They would have just had faith. They would have just had faith in what they heard. So, so look at, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things because he says, I'm going to raise up a prophet among your brethren and him you shall hear. He's talking about Jesus, the Messiah. Hear him. He's going to speak better things than that of Abel, of Abel's blood. Um, I will open, I'll open my mouth. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Yeah, so my God is a revealer of secrets. You know, seest thou, you know, how does that, how does the scripture go? You know, see that thou can um, understand this secret, right? Um, I will utter, I will utter things, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Okay, now you got Psalms, okay? Because he says, Matthew says right here that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. Okay, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will open my mouth in parables, okay? I will utter dark sayings of old. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Yeah, I will utter dark dark sayings, things that have been kept secret. Because now the lights come. So it's all made manifest. There's nothing secret that won't be made manifest. Nothing hidden that won't come abroad. There's nothing darkness um you know that that won't be manifest in the light because light reveals light light exposes but you know light 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 shines and if the darkness can't hear that's what light's doing light's going to give revelation um and open eyes and that's why he came to open their eyes to turn them from darkness to light to understand spiritual things to understand things concerning the kingdom of, of heaven to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and faith, you know, um, an inheritance, and through faith that is sanctified in me, uh, Jesus, right? The body prepared, because God has opened the ears that He don't desire your sacrifices and offerings no more. He don't He don't want you to do those things anymore. He's going to open your ears, let you know a body has thou prepared. Well, what do you want then? Oh, your will. I will do your will, O Lord. Oh God, I will do your will. The volume of the book is written of me. And in Hebrews 10, I came to do your will. Yeah, he did. He did come to do his will. So I opened my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Mo they knew. They knew. They knew. They knew. They knew. Um, if you believe Moses, then you would believe me, Jesus said, because Moses wrote of me. So you don't believe Moses. It's Moses? Moses wrote of Jesus. The scriptures testify him. The volume of the book. It's about that. It's about um, uh, the ways made. 
um, for uh, God's going to do it. He did. Um, for fellowship, uh, communion with God again, and fellowship and a restored relationship and forgiveness and a relationship with him again. And he helps us by the power of the Holy Spirit, abiding in the vine is pretty awesome. So which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. I will open their mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. <laughs> we will not hide them from our children. No, I'm going to tell Aiden for sure. I'm telling you, we'll not hide them from our children. Showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord. And his strength. And his strength and his wonderful, oh, there it is. And his wonderful works that he hath done. That was in Psalms 40. About his wonderful works. What Jesus was going to be sent to go declare. And the thoughts of God. Remember it said that? And all the wonderful works. This is, this is, talk, this is talk, it's talking about. These sayings are going to be opened up. My um, offerings and sin offerings and sacrifices. God doesn't desire. He has no pleasure in them. And um, uh, he's going to open. Thine, thine ear has thou opened. What did he open your ear to? Oh, to what he does desire. He desires that that you believe on who he had sent. God, um, a body prepared, right? And it goes with this, the works that he did right here. And his wonderful works that he had done. He opened, he opened the ears and now we hear. The body prepared. He opened the ears and now we hear. Now we hear. The body prepared is how God's will is done. Yeah, God will be done. Not your will, but my, not my will, God, but your will be done. And this is my son who I'm well pleased. Wow. So look at right here, verse 4, the last sentence. And his wonderful works which he had done. And these are the sayings of old that are opened opened up unto us, right? Um, here we go. These are, the same, these are the sayings of old that are opened up unto us, right? Look at... Verse 5, many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works. <laughs> oh, what is what, what is it talking about? It said there's going to be sayings of old that were hidden um, since the foundation of the world that were kept secret, that were kept secret. Wonderful works. God doesn't, um, he's going to reveal them. And he, uh, they've been kept secret, sayings of old, dark sayings. And um, they knew what, what they were. And um, they weren't going to keep it from their children. They revealed, God reveals these, God reveal, God reveals these things to his servants. And he's talking about, in the last verse I just read, you saw about his, are, are thy wonderful works. And then here, this is right here where it talks about sacrifice and offerings. Um, thou didst not desire, mine ears hast thou, hast thou opened. And it talks about God kept things secret since the foundations, since the foundation of the world. And um, he's going to open his mouth in parables to those that do hear um, to reveal, because it was given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. To them it was not given, so he speaks in parables. In parables, But he talks about he's going to open your ears. He opens your ears, opens your understanding that you might understand the scriptures. You might understand the wonderful works that he opened your ears that he's going to provide the sacrifice and offering, one-time atonement, Jesus Christ. And that's in Hebrew 10, and it all goes with this. And all those scriptures go together. you got to study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman needeth not to be ashamed. Not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, right? Um, it is life unto everyone that believes. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Me, an inward Jew. Circumcision of the heart and ears. An inward Jew. Yeah, I know. Then, okay, so, mine ears has now opened. Burn offering and sin offering has done not required. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do thy will, oh my God. Yeah, thy law is within my heart. Yeah, it's talking, it's talking about what Jesus did. He delights to do God's will. Are your ears open? Do you receive the body prepared? The prepared. Um, got Jesus spoke in parables. Um Unto you it is given. Are you someone that is unto you is, it is given? Where we can say, blessed are your eyes for they see, and blessed are your ears for they hear. For many um, righteous and rulers and prophets have desired to see those things and hear those things, you know, mighty men. They desire to hear these things, and they have not heard it, and they have not seen it. But blessed are your ears and your eyes, right? Because you do understand. So my ears have you opened. 
what are the one what are the what are the wonderful works that Jesus would declare and speak of them right look at thy thoughts wonderful works that's been hidden kept secret but your ears have been opened that God doesn't desire sacrifice and offerings no more. He, don't, he never had pleasure in that stuff. It's temporary, a shadow. He never had pleasure in that. But what he, what he did do is God had a body prepared. So are your ears open to hear what he, what he did do? He doesn't desire sacrifice and offering. So what did he do? A body prepared. He did it. It is finished. God did it all. Um, what else did he say? I delight to do thy will. It's about Jesus. I have preached righteousness. Oh, he sure did. In, in the great congregation, lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. Oh, no, he didn't. No, there was not one lie in his mouth. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness. And, the, and yeah, he declared the salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness. That's true, too. And thy truth from the great congregation. Tender mercies. Yeah. Oh, withhold not thou thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. Oh, the word is preserved. It was the son was hidden in the bosom of his father. What? But to shame that wish me evil? Yeah. Let's read Hebrews uh, 10 for a minute. And then we'll, that's it. So I want to see something. Because I want, cause I want to see something really quick, if you don't mind. For the law having a shadow of good things. See, it's good. It's a shadow. The schoolmaster points you to Jesus. Yeah. Um, you know, the law is not for the righteous. It's for the it's for the wicked and the and the evildoers, the liars, the murderers, you know, the men the manslayers, you know, all that stuff. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. And not the very image of the things. And not the very image of the things. Can can never with those see? Can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually, make the comers thereon to perfect. That cannot perfect you. That's why God says, I have no desire and no pleasure in, you know, these burnt offerings and sin offerings and sacrifices you do. I don't have any pleasure in it. It's temporal. I'll point you to Jesus, what he's saying. But, oh, Lord, you don't have pleasure in doing those things, but you open my ears to understand what? Ah, God says, I will provi provide the lamb. A body has thou provided. And I will do your will, O Lord. Talking about the Son of God. Awesome. It's like all right there. For then would they, for then would they not have ceased to be offered? Yeah. If it was perfect, if that could make you perfect, wouldn't it have ceased to be offered? Why did they have to do it continuously? Why didn't it just cease to be offered? One time, one time that's it can't make you perfect it was a shadow of good things to come good things to come who's the good things to come oh but body is thou prepared are your ears open to understand right because that the worshipers once once purged should have had no more conscience of sins and see doing it year after year they're reminded of their sins their sins oh i'm sinning nope we abide in the vine we don't focus on the sin but let God, he's a vine dresser, the father. He's going to prune you and purge you and get the stuff that's bad and produce the good fruits in you. I mean, it's awesome, right? But in those sacrifices, in those sacrifices, there's a remembrance made every year. See? It would, in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. Yeah. For it is not possible that the blood of... That, no, there's no remission. Of, there's no remission um, of sins without the shedding of blood. And it is a, it is a one-time offering. And God already says, I don't take pleasure. Since you saw in Psalms, God says he doesn't take pleasure in uh, the burnt offerings and sin offerings. Um, he had no, he had past, he had no desire in that stuff. It was temporal, a shadow of good things to come. Um, open your ears. A body has thou prepared. Because um, God was going to do it one time. He didn't have pleasure. He didn't, he didn't have pleasure in that. So you should, should be able to see he didn't have pleasure in doing that, that God was going to replace that with something that is perfect. One time, cease, it is finished. Cease to be offered. It is finished. Not like, not like Rome, um, the Catholics, you know, acting like the Jews, 
taking Jesus like he's an animal sacrifice and re-sacrificing him. Maybe not, maybe not, maybe not uh, every year, year after year continually, but they're doing it week after week continually, sacrificing Jesus like he's an animal sacrifice. So that is the synagogue of Satan that say they're Jews and they're liars. Um, that's the Gentiles acting like Jews. And that's not, that's not right either. That's the wrong gospel too. That's wrong. That's not the gospel of grace. Um, that's not the gospel at all. The gospel, the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ is your salvation. Okay. For it is not possible for, okay. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, so it's not possible, it's not possible the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not. See, when he cometh into the world, he, he saith, he saith, he saith, remember, I'm going to raise up a brother, among, I'm going to raise up a prophet among your brethren and him you shall hear. So when he cometh, and he did, you better hear him. He says, he's going to tell you what it means to open your ears. He's going to open them now. He's going to speak things of old, like in Psalms. He's going to tell you stark sayings that were hidden before um, the foundation of the world. He's going to speak things in parables. And if you have ears to hear it, he speaks in parables for those. Um, it's a mystery um, unto them who can receive it. You know, it's not for everybody. Um, if you hear, you hear, and you don't, you don't. And that's that's what he talks about. Because some have to some have to not hear, because then that saying is fulfilled in uh, uh, Isaiah that says, seeing they see not, they can't perceive, and hearing they can't understand. Right? And they're dull of hearing that. So that saying's fulfilled. It's all being, you know, God's word is just happening right now, real life. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, so now the light has come. Since the light has come, the light is going to reveal the secrets of what does it mean in Psalms that I don't, um, you know, I don't, I don't desire uh, burnt offerings and sacrifices. Um, I'm going to open your ears instead, you know, open mine ears. Well, when Jesus, the light comes, he's going to let you know and reveal it and appear, he's going to reveal it to you, that sacrifice and what he does desire. He's going to give you the, he's going to give you, he's going to give you the answer to it. Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not. So God don't desire that. He's no pleasure in it. But now look at Jesus. The light came to reveal a secret that's been hidden. If you can hear it. Well, what do you desire then, Lord? I got this, God says. You don't have to do anything. This part, the salvation part. You abide in me and then God will um, help you root out root out all the sinning and the lust and the different things and he'll renew your mind and washes you. He does all this stuff. Um, you have to be willing and obedient to be used by God. Be willing and hate what God hates. Um, Got to be willing to be used by him and obedient. And God helps you do it. You don't want to do it in your flesh. It's not possible. So look at, so what does God want? What does he desire? Well, a body has thou prepared me. Yeah, he's revealing the sayings that have been kept secret. The marvelous works that it said in Psalms. You seen it? You seen it right before that. The volume of the book is written to me. Jesus, um, you know, I come to do your will, oh God. <laughs> in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Past. He had had no pleasure in that stuff. But he has pleasure in his son. This is my son. When he was uh, baptized, water baptism by John the Baptist to fulfill all righteousness. Um, this is my son in whom I am well, well pleased. Then said I, lo, I come in the vault. Uh, then said I, lo, I come. I come. Oh, oh, he's already come. In the volume, the volume of the book. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above when he said. See, above, above when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin. See all those? The law? Moses? Thou wouldest not, neither has, neither had pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Now, the law cannot take away sins. You know, Jesus, oh yeah, he did everything. Um, then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Who came? the Messiah, your Messiah, receive him, believe, be persuaded, this is the truth. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Oh, a better, the covenant, New Testament, um, a new covenant with his people. He's going to write the word in your heart, um, you know, and you're going to follow him because you have the Holy, Holy Spirit, um, you know, in the one-time sin offering. You don't have to do those ordinances. They were nailed to the cross. By the which... 
but you still keep the Ten Commandments because those are good. You keep those. And God draws you to obey those. You have a working faith, <clears throat> an obedient faith, um, a new heart's desire, you know. And if you fall, well, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, or a mediator, and you get back up. That's what grace is. It's not, it's not, it's not a license to sin. Um, and he helps you do it because the Father's the vine dresser, and you have to abide in the vine. And he does it. He prunes. And you get delivered, and you're being justified and sanctified and but through him. Through through him, and he'll finish the work he started. Um, by the which, well, we are sanctified through the offering. It has ceased. It, 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 is, it, is, it is finished. If, if, if offering bulls and goats and all the sacrifices could make you perfect, it would have ceased. It would have been one time, but it was continually. And Rome's doing it wrong, too, because they're week after week sacrificing another Jesus. An idol, an image of Jesus, a graven image, week after week, as if he's an animal sacrifice. So that's error. That is a Pharisee Gentile house pretending to be Jews, Jews, and they're not in the right gospel. So by the which we are sanctified through the offering, this one time it is finished, of the body prepared, the body of Jesus Christ, once for all. Awesome. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. It's just temporal and it points you to Jesus. The one time the body prepared, if thine eyes, thine, thine ears be opened, right? Um, but this man, but this man, because he is the son of man, the son of God, the son of David. He came from a uh, Abraham's seed. Uh, the word made flesh. Oh, the word made flesh. Awesome. After he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God from henceforth experience expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Yeah. Um, for by one offering he hath perfected, oh, forever, them that are sanctified. And we're sanctified through the word. Um, sanctify them in the truth and the word is truth. So we can't, couldn't be made perfect doing year after year, continually doing that. In Rome Catholics, you cannot be made perfect either. Even though you believe in Jesus, it's another Jesus. You're being like Israel um, taking Jesus and sacrificing him over and over again at your Eucharist. That's the same thing. Can't you see the flaw in that? If you're a Catholic and watching this, well, I'm an ex-Catholic and God showed me that that is, that's the house. That is the rebellious house. Read Revelation 2, 9, Revelation 3, 9. And you'll see how they're the Pharisees of today, the Gentile Pharisees. Pharisee, holy, holy see, Pharisee. Where of the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he had say he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days. Remember this? Um is in the Old Testament. Saith the Lord, I will put my law, my laws into their hearts and in their minds while I write them, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more, because it'll be one time. If you have to keep doing sin, uh, if you have to keep doing animal sacrifices and sin offerings and burnt offerings continually year after year, you're going to remember, you're going to remember your sins and your iniquities year after year. But if there's a one-time sacrifice and there is Jesus Christ, the body prepared, if thine ears are open and you hear what he does desire, he doesn't desire the year after year because your sins and iniquities with the one-time atonement, Jesus Christ, will I remember no more. That's the promise. And you can't even recognize it, some of you. I pray that you do. Um, now where remission of these things is, there is no more offering for sin. The blood. There's remission. Forgiveness of sin. You just abide in him. Um, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. He's your forever high, high priest. Um, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, which is to say his flesh, right? And having a high priest over the house of God. High priest. He's the high priest. He's the one-time sacrifice. I mean, how could it be any more clear? Um, let us draw near with a true heart. God's... God's, God's looking, God's looking at the heart. He wants you to be willing and obedient, willing and obedient, not a Pharisee, not trying to do things in your flesh and outward show, willing and obedient. He's looking at the heart and abide in the vine. And he is the one doing it. Grace is moving you. And it's an obedient working faith. You're not saved by a work first. That's, that's not true. Let us draw near. We have godly sorrow repentance. Awesome. 
Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. Yeah. Nothing to do with physical elements and anything like that. And our bodies washed with... Should I go find a hose outside? Um, water baptism? Jesus fulfilled all righteousness. You're washed by the washing of water by the word. Now you're clean by the word I spoke unto you. It's not the washing of your body. Your heart is sprinkled from an evil conscience. That's the baptism that Jesus will baptize you with by upon hearing the word. And our bodies washed with pure water. His blood. His blood. Not physical water baptism, the elements. If I, that's pure water. If you go look at my other videos, shows my water baptism in a Pentecostal church last year. I, I believed that I had to go do a work to be saved or that I'm going to hell. I believed that I needed to go and get physically water baptized in the elements in Jesus' name like Acts 2.38 says. That all points to Jesus also. Everything points to Jesus. It's spiritual. That was not pure water at all. My, my body, my, my body had, my body didn't, that, that was not pure water. I got into water and he laid his hands on me and there was a serpent manifest, a serpent, a face of a serpent manifest between his hand and my head. My body was not washed with pure water. That wasn't the, the pure water. There's the living water. The Samaritan woman at the well asked Jesus for a drink and he'll give you living water, a well of salvation shooting up into everlasting life right? Um, pure water. So the water in your tub, the water in, in the ocean, go get baptized in the sea, go get water baptized outside, um, in, you know, in one of those FEMA coffins, you're drowning men in perdition and destruction, death. Um, you're getting filled up with devils. That's what's happening in the water. It's not pure water. That's, that's not pure water. Screenshot that. <laughs> Screen, screenshot that. Well, because that, that, is a, that is another good one um, about, you know, what water, being baptized by born again of water and spirit actually means. Jesus is the living water. It's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. It's talking about Jesus and he does it all. It's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke one another to love. Unto love and unto good works, right? Good works, not forsaken. Okay, so here. So, yeah, that's what it means. Um, now, Jesus being a perfect offering, a lamb offering. Uh, I can't remember where it's at. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> so, someone asked. Well, Jesus wasn't a, a burnt offering. He didn't get burnt. He, he didn't get burned. Not not physically. Because, like, cause like his, uh, his um, a bone wasn't broken. You got to read all the other scriptures, how they go together about this perfect lamb offering. Slam offering, Jesus Christ. Yes, and Jesus indeed was a burnt offering spiritually. He was. He really was. Okay. Lamb, sin offering. Oh, my Penny Joshua. Penny and Joshua. Well, yes, you you are the only Jewish friend that I have. And talking to you is actually um has actually been very nice. Um I'm learning a lot learning a lot and looking into a lot because of the questions you have. It is great questions. And I bring you, yes, I bring you up to people um, because, you know, um, we all pray for you together that you'll receive your Messiah. And we love you, Penny. Um, so my my Jew friend, my Jew friend is trying to say Jesus wasn't a burnt offering. And um, Penny, you've already posted all of this all over my comment section. So people see it. People see it, you know. So um, I hope you don't mind that I'm um, adding this to the video. But my Jew friend is trying to say, um, Jesus wasn't a burnt offering because a sacrifice must be burnt and Jesus wasn't set to a flame, to a crisp. But, um, it's spiritual, I think, Penny. Uh, I know it's spiritual. Um, it's not the flesh. It's, it's the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. The sayings, they are spirit and they are life, right? So God receives this perfect sin, burnt offering, unspotted lamb. God receives this. The others he had no pleasure in year after year. God opens thine ears that a body has thou prepared um god purchased the church with his own, with his own blood told abraham i'll provide the lamb that was his only begotten that was his, abraham's only son um in isaac shall thy seed be called he didn't want abraham's 
literal physical firstborn. Um, and Isaac, you would think, well, then why didn't he why didn't he receive Isaac? Why didn't he receive Isaac? It was to point you to Jesus that God, I will provide the lamb. I will do it all because Abraham's faith was counted for righteousness and Abraham moved in a working faith and obedient faith. He had faith. He was blind like Paul. He didn't know, he didn't know where he was going. God told him what to go do. Okay, you get my son. Let me go get the wood and going to burn my, I'm going to kill him and burn him and offer him up because in Isaac shall thy seed be called. No, uh, that was a faith. Abraham believed God. He believed God and his faith was counted for righteousness. And then since he believed, he was willing to be used by God. He was willing and obedient. Then it was an obedient working faith. Awesome. And then God said, I'll provide the lamb. It points you to Jesus because the scriptures testify of him. But God receives this perfect sin off sin offering on spotted lamb. Because look at it in Ephesians 2 5. Ephesians 5 2. Sorry. <laughs> and walk in love, right? As Christ had also loved us, right? Because that's one of the commandments too. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbors yourself. Um, uh, laying your life down. I have to look that up again. Um, but walk in love as Christ hath also loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. He's an offering. He's a sacrifice to God. Here's your burnt offering, Penny. It's spiritual. For a Sweet smelling savor. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. And love. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Greater love hath no man than this. Um, that a life. Okay. Greater love hath no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his friends. You know. This is about this is about Jesus Jesus too, Penny. If you're watching this, um, I love you, Penny and Joshua. I'm not sure who I'm talking to. <laughs> oh, you know, sometimes. Well, you already know. Sometimes I think I'm talking to Joshua. Sometimes I think I'm talking to Penny, but I don't know. Could be wrong. Um, a man, a man that has friends must show himself friendly. Yeah, you do. And there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Now you think about who that is. Okay? I hope that all this makes sense. All right. Um, God bless you in Jesus Christ.